The magical long-haired Rapunzel has spent her entire life in a tower, but now that a runaway thief has stumbled upon her, she is about to discover the world for the first time and who she really is. Hi, I'm Andre. I'm Michelle. I'm Emily. And I'm Luis. And we are The Walt Vault, a family-friendly podcast where we get silly and talk about Disney movies. Welcome to The Walt Vault, episode 21. You guys were making noises right before we started this. And now you're <laughs> it's because we're 21, we can drink silent. liquor now. You guys, we we're a little it. feisty tonight. Yeah, we are a little feisty. A little some, feisty. We got some foreign coffee. <laughs> oh, yeah. We are drinking Expedition Roasters coffees today, and we have the sampler pack. We have... Bobsled brew. We have redhead rum. We have roundup roast. We have enchanted, uh, enchanted, enchanted, oh. <laughs> enchanted, enchanted tiki, <laughs> enchanted tiki coconut. Thank you. And then Andre, what's yours? Um, it's uh, New Orleans, New Orleans praline. 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 It's very. I'm good. gonna have to say that mine is the best. The enchanted tiki coconut. Mine's the best. Um, no, the Roundup Rose is definitely the best. I like the New Orleans Praline. So we all good. like the ones that we're trying, <laughs> but we also pick the ones that we thought we would enjoy the yeah. most. So, so FYI, they're all great. They're all, they're all great. Yeah, if you, haven't, is, if you haven't tried their coffee, get on it. This <laughs> is not an ad, but I mean, they did not pay us for this, but Expedition Coffee, you guys rock. <laughs> it's Disney related, so, you know. How is, I, I, don't, I don't know anything about this company. Tell me about them. <laughs> the Tiki Room Tiki Coconut. Oh. Okay, what? but like, are they a, a redhead so rum? I, we want the redhead. I get it, but are like, are they like directly the associated with the company, about not Disney? the company? Oh flavors. no, I don't think they're associated. Oh, they're okay. not like a Disney company. No, they're they're a brewing company. Have, have you ever yeah. heard of? Um, oh man, what's that candle company? There's this candle company where all of their smells <laughs> candelabra are Disney. Yeah, I got you one for Christmas. Yeah, yeah, once. yeah. It's Walter like and Co- Wal- yeah, Walter and Rosie Candle Company. Yes, oh. so, so it's the same thing. They just are. They like Disney, and so they made Disney flavored coffee. I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I didn't actually say all of the the names of them, but each of them has like the Bob Slitters Brew is fudge brownie flavor, and it's supposed to be emulating like the Matterhorn, the Matterhorn. right? Uh, so each of their coffees is emulating either like a land or a ride or an attraction. I thought it was Her cool movie, runnings. like Roundup <laughs> Roast is Woody's Roundup. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. So They're so delicious. You go Ru- Ru- Rudy Roundup. Ru- Rudy Ru- 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 <laughs> You guys, this uh, episode, we're talking about the movie Tangled. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> and Vladimir collects ceramic unicorns. unicorns. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> I love that part. Yeah, so we're talking about Tangled. Yeah. Emily's favorite Disney princess. Yeah, what's your first impression? You go first. I love Rapunzel. Everything about Rapunzel. Rapunzel. She, I, she's just so fabulous, you guys. Um, first impression is that I've seen, I've seen this movie the most out of all of us for sure. Um, I watched it in theaters twice, definitely. Um, I, I really enjoy it every time. I think it's really fun. I think that it has a lot of really cool themes that runs through it. And I actually feel... <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do a Michelleism. Are you ready? Oh. I connect to Rapunzel. Oh, I, do you? <laughs> oh. You guys, I connect with Rapunzel. You grew up um, in a tower. I grew up in an ivory tower, my friend. Your hair is magical. My hair is magical, <laughs> and it is blonde now. So, boom. Mm. Um, but what, Lou? You have skeptical eyes. Her or, original tower brunette. is not made out of ivory. It is made out of cobblestone. Huh. fun fact. I said what my tower was made out of, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, um, I appreciate the the sentiment, Louis. Um, <laughs> old man negative on the mic, everyone. Um, <laughs> and um, but I I really enjoy it. I know that there. Uh, Michelle already has a face on. She's ready. She's ready to pick my princess not, apart. No, not. Man, alliteration. What? But what are you talking about? <laughs> what? No, but I'm. Um, I really enjoyed this movie a lot. Um, I know that there's things that. Keep, that you know, there's things, but there's things. It's beautiful. We'll talk about the things. No, don't talk about that. Right, we won't mention the things. <laughs> yes, we will talk beautiful. about the things. Skeptical. Michelle, like, go ahead. Go ahead, Michelle. <laughs> like I believe in mermaids, but I don't believe that people can have magical hair that appears from the sun. Like, like to me, mermaids more likely <laughs> exist than a piece of the sun falling from the sky, landing in the ground and growing a magical flower. That's where you lose me. Okay. What gills is what I'm going to ask you. Mm. Gills? No gills. How they breathe. Mm-hmm. 
They're Explain kind of, that. They're part fish, part mammal. Yeah, where uh, are their gills? They don't. How do they reproduce? That's my problem. Mm-hmm. We already had this discussion. <laughs> Remember, there was a slit there. The okay. F- the fish world. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> I, I, I will say that my first impressions of this movie are that <laughs> I've only seen it once. And uh, this is the second time I've seen the movie. And the reason I had only seen it once is just because I did not connect <laughs> with Rapunzel. Mm. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just didn't connect with her very well, which is so ironic because I love going to the Princess Fantasy Fair at Disneyland and watching the Rapunzel reenactment. Mm-hmm. I love that show. Absolutely. It's quite like, hilarious. Rapunzel in the parks is great, but Rapunzel the movie to me is just okay. But I will okay. I will say that I like I liked the movie. I liked the second half better. It's a tearjerker every time. Like I cry every time, but is it my awesome. favorite princess movie? No. Is it a good one? Yes. All right. What hmm. about you, Luis? Oh. <laughs> you, you. Um, you, you. I I like it a lot. What? Um, okay, this is kind of. Don't say that just because your wife loves it. No. Okay. I said I liked it a lot. I didn't say I loved it. Oh. So. <laughs> Old man. <negative>. Good <laughs> distinction. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know. Adjectives. I, I, I'm gonna you know hopefully not lose any man points here, but she's she's cute. She's a cute, she's a cute princess, Word. like very, Word. <laughs> very innocent. Like the moment she hits the grass, like she's kind of like a child, right. you know, her feet are, you know, pigeon toed. And then like every now and then she gives, uh, you know, the face, uh, s- the smolder a look, which <laughs> is like all puppy eyes and like, uh, you, you know, tear jerkers. <laughs> See, reasons that you like her are reasons I do not. Ah. Interesting. Interesting. We'll talk if I wasn't holding yeah. the mic, I would do the raccoon interesting <laughs> fingers. Interesting. <laughs> but it's very hard because to do we, that. the whole time I said the girl needs to put some shoes on. Put some shoes on. Why isn't she wearing shoes? Put some shoes on. You don't put wear shoes. shoes on. Put some shoes on. Put some shoes on. You ain't Without got shoes on right now. <laughs> you are wearing socks right. at least. <laughs> Without trying to be too. I know what you're going to say right now. Well, without trying to stay PC, she's a white girl. Barefoot all the time. Whoa. She's a long-haired hippie. True. What she never needs impressions. Then she never long-haired to wear hippie. shoes. Uh, also, uh, before I get to my first impression, I have a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a fun fact. Um, habitually barefoot characters like Rapunzel are constantly barefoot, which is something she shares in common with actress Mandy Moore, who plays her. Uh, and Mandy Moore likes to perform barefoot. Bare feet are also symbolic of innocence. FYI, is it reason oh, for the bare okay. feet? Isn't Aladdin barefoot? Aladdin is. He don't have he's money. He's a street for shoes. rat, dude. <laughs> yeah, he's a street rat. He <laughs> she never he had, had to touch shoes. the ground. She can't go and buy herself some shoes. Her mom was like, "No shoes." And how was she supposed to feel the grass, the dirt, the way she dreamed they'd be if she was wearing shoes? Bare feet. I don't know. How would she feel the summer breeze on her toes? <laughs> I don't want to feel the summer breeze <laughs> on my toes. <laughs> feel the summer breeze. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my toes. Okay. I want to know. Oh. Um, my first impression. I want to know. <laughs> different movie. Can you tell um, I like this movie. Uh, I did not see it in theaters, which is rare. Uh, that that I normally go see Disney movies in, in the Can theater. I actually back up for a second? Yeah, I for actually it. was not going to see this in theaters, mm. and one of my friends was like, hey, did you know that Disney movie came out? And I was not, and I know that we're going to talk about like classic Rapunzel in a while. Get to it, yeah. I was not a fan of classic right. Rapunzel, so I was like, eh. And she was like, come on, let's go see it. And I went and watched she it. Changed and she changed your life. She changed she. Change my life. Go ahead. <laughs> That's what Emily's <laughs> life begin. Yeah. So, uh, totally. yeah, I like I like this movie. Uh, I saw it. I think the first time, like my parents had like just started playing the movie in in, in like their bedroom. Like we they weren't even watching it, and I just walked in, and we just started hanging out, and we all just sort of sat and watched the movie and <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and, and started <laughs> enjoying it, and it was really fun. I, I I liked it the first time. I liked it this time. It's good stuff. It's not my favorite stuff. You know, it's uh, it's good. I have a problem with that story, and it's not even about Tangled. What? You guys may not may or may not know, but Andre's family has a theater room in their oh, house. Oh, yeah. So why were you watching it in a bedroom? My dad was upstairs. <laughs> I went upstairs to talk to my dad. My mom was up there, too. The movie Tangled came on the TV, and we all sat there and watched it instead of moving uh, you know, 45 feet to our theater room. I'm just saying. They have a there. legitimate theater room. I remember in high school it's walking in and being like, oh. <gasps> It's it's quite grand. I um, have that same experience you have where growing up, my dad would stay up late and I would stay up late because we're night owls. 
And then he would just be watching like the AMC channel and then like a random movie would play, which most of the time it was Harry Potter. (laughs) And then we would watch like one hour of a Harry Potter film and then go to bed. (laughs) 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 Kind of similar. That's That's similar, right? (laughs) Good opening of Goblet of Fire. That's (sighs) great. Um, (laughs) I know the whole first half of the movie by heart. So yeah, (laughs) it's it's good stuff. Um, I want to start off with just some, some general facts about this movie. Because there's a lot of interesting ones. It wasn't originally called Tangled. Mm-hmm. It was originally called Rapunzel Unbraided. Yes. And uh, then they changed it to which just... Which sounds really like Good thing weird. they changed it. Sounds yeah. like a well, cause weird. What yeah. they were going to do is they were going to kind of like make this a pseudo sequel to Enchanted. And yes. like have it be live action. And then she like transports herself to a magical fairy tale world and stuff like that. Yeah. Do so not they have do that, that idea at all. And then they say thank you to that. And then they gone. changed it to just Rapunzel. And then they they were looking at like the success of The Princess and the Frog, which had a lot of critical acclaim but didn't make a ton of money. Right. And they were like, well, maybe we should change it so that it's not just for girls. Maybe we should not yeah. have a girl's name in the title. We'll open it up. We'll put Flynn on the poster, and we'll make it for boys and girls, and they changed it to Tangled. Well, it's funny because when you look at the poster, especially the the original poster where she, where Rapunzel's standing there with the frying pan, you have Flynn with the sword, right, and Maximus, the horse in the background. Yeah. Maximus has the sword, oh. Flynn has the frying pan, and uh, Rapunzel's, Rapunzel's just holding, holding her, her hair. Oh, that's all she needs. Excuse me. See? <laughs> yeah, that's all she needs. She's got it as a whip. She's Indiana Jones. Right. Um, but... You can't, to me, I didn't look at her and think princess mm-hmm. when you look at that. Right. No. I mean, she's wearing a dress, yes. but like, eh, it's, I think that's, it, that, it really falls in line with what you're talking about. Yeah, so you know? that, that's, that's what their intent was, and it, it, I think it worked technically. Like, I don't know if they had named the princess and the frog, you know. Uh, Tiana? Th- Tiana turns into a frog or whatever. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> if they had named it something different than on Tiana's palace or something, if it would have made any more money. But this movie. Mm. The gumbo pot. The gumbo pot. Oh man, I would see, go. See I would have come see me pot. some gumbo pot. Princess and the Frog is on another level to me. I think the fact that they named it Tangled confused me because, like, her hair was never tangled. She brushed that a lot. Girl, it's not about the hair. It's What's tangled. Their, their lives. Their lives together. are inter- they intertwined. It's a poetic oh. aspect. <laughs> this Just is awkward. <laughs> Just jumped Their her rating lives up. lives got tangled <laughs> together. Yeah. yeah. But this movie made a lot of money. It made, yeah, I definitely um, thought it was about her hair. It made <laughs> almost $600 million worldwide. <laughs> wow. Boom. Yeah. And this was the one right after Princess Right Nevada. after Princess Yes. Nevada. It was yes. the first, like, 3D yeah, yeah, yeah. Princess, first 3D animated, um, uh, princess movie. Princess movie. And it's also the 50th yes. Disney movie. That's one of my oh. favorite facts Disney is that animated. when we were watching the movie in the theaters, they made a big to do about that that it was the 50th animated feature um it's on all of the um all of the versions that you watch it pops up at the beginning Mm. that it's the 50th i think that's really cool just because that really is a milestone right i mean that shows you how many how many movies we get to watch on this (laughs) (laughs) but i mean i mean that that shows the difference and and really the breadth of what disney's done in their Mm -hmm. repertoire Uh, I'm still not over the fact that Tangled's not about her hair. The movie makes so much more sense now. Oh my god! Well, I know, I know <laughs> what the movie's about, but the <laughs> title, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a light bulb went on in my head. It's like, yeah. ding, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and they all are intertwined because, like, if with if one thing hadn't happened, the rest of it yes. wouldn't have happened. It's very right. cause and effect. I know. I driven. said. I know. I said I was going to let you lead the conversation. Go ahead. You lead. Like, um, but hold on, Luis had something to say, oh. and I'm going to let him old man it. Rapunzel as a fairy tale doesn't really. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is not a very popular fairy tale to begin no, with. No, it's so one of my like, least favorite. It's mine like, as well. I could understand why they had to change the name because mm-hmm. I this if Rapunzel came out, I'd be like, mm, ah, no, I wouldn't good. have been excited. Right. I and I think that's really still part of the reason why I've only seen it a handful of times. Before you get going, Andrea, will you tell us some backstory it's, on it? It's a weird fairy tale. Okay, I didn't know. Any of it, basically. Like I, before I read a, a Wikipedia description, I had no idea what Rapunzel was about. I just knew she had long hair. She's stuck in a tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Prince climbs up and saves her. And I that's guess that's kind of all I, I knew that's too. The whole story, right? Okay, that's kind of boring. So it's a grim uh, fairy tale. The Grim Bros. Uh, the Bros. The, the bros. Brothers Grim. <laughs> Say it right. The Bra Bra. Grim Bros. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in the story. 
a a couple. They're they're very poor. They live like right across the street from this witch who has a magical garden. I thought you were gonna say across from this tower. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Um, they in the witch's garden they have a uh, rampion, which is like some kind of vegetable or something like that. And rampion, so carrots. Uh, sure. I'm gonna but, call them carrots. But rampion is also named Rapunzel. It, oh. that's, that's what the plant is called. Oh, fine. So not oh. carrots. The 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 <laughs> wife is pregnant. She's like, babe, I really want some Rapunzel. Hook me up with some Rapunzel. So the husband hops over the fence, steals some Rapunzel, puts it in her uh, salad. She eats it. She loves it. She's like, dude, you got to give me some more Rapunzel. I'm super into this. He goes over the wall again. I can attest to this having been pregnant. (laughs) (laughs) Go ahead. Just, you know, classic craving stuff. (laughs) And he gets caught the second time by Mother Gothel. Mother Gothel mm-hmm. takes him and is the like, witch? Yes. the witch, yes, okay. she's a witch. She says, I'll let you have as much Rapunzel as you want, but you have to give me your firstborn child. And the mom's okay with that? And mom obviously didn't know this. I don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily know if mom knew or not. That wasn't in the, the Wikipedia article. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't but in the Wikipedia. In the super he didn't read the actual but he's book. In a, he's in a sticky situation, so he's like, sure, totally. You can have the firstborn baby or whatever. Must, yeah, okay. Baby's born. I assume the magical Rapunzel that mom had eaten gave her magical hair. Uh, Gothel takes her, and then after she turns 12, locks her in a tower. I think that's when her hair started getting real long. And then from then on, <laughs> from then on, she goes, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel lets her up. They hang out. <laughs> as, Who, mom as, or mother Gothel? As Gothel and, Gothel and daughter. Okay. And then, um, and then a prince, he comes along. He's he um, he hears her singing and then he's like, oh, I can't get into this place. There's no doors or stairs. That's weird. And uh, so he waits. Mother Gothel comes out or no, she comes up. She goes up. Punzel, Punzel, let down your hair. He figures out, oh, that's how you get into this place. <laughs> <laughs> Open <laughs> sesame. <laughs> and then and then um, after Gothel leaves, he goes up there and she's like, oh, man, wow, that's amazing. And. Uh, you know he comes keep it, he keeps coming back they they hang out a lot uh-huh. and at one point <laughs> at one point rapunzel like gives it away that um she's been seeing a man you know like she says like how come you're so much lighter than my prince fellow oh i mean uh never mind mother gothel whatever and so mother gothel takes her away she cuts off her hair she puts her in like deep in the woods or something like that to get eaten by bears get, i guess and then the prince comes by Mother Gothel's up there. He says, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. She takes the hair that she cut off <laughs> and brings, <laughs> brings him up. And he's like, oh, Mother Gothel, you're not Rapunzel. Whoa. And then the story kind of just skipped over. I don't know what happens to <laughs> I don't know what happens to Mother Gothel or Sick. to him or whatever. <laughs> but he, he finds her in the woods and they live happily ever after. That's basically the whole story. Okay. okay. Yeah. So they kind of use some bits and pieces. Yes, they do Masterfully, some stuff. Though, right. they take in a way stuff. better way because that's a weird fairy tale. It's but a, like the part, story. like throwing her hair over, like at the end when Flynn actually says that mm-hmm. and he's climbing up her hair. That was kind of Mother Gothel throwing right. her hair out the window. So I mean, like they, they kind of mm-hmm. okay, interesting. Now we have backstory, Michelle. Right. You know what I mean? You can see where that kind of it makes plays it in. makes sense. Um, so thank you for that recap. No problem. Wikipedia. Got- it's all from memory. <laughs> Yeah, he did that just straight row, guys. Read it yesterday. <laughs> Boom. I'm making a number three, but I really only have two things because one's just a comment. And my comment was that I like Rapunzel with all of her hair braided better than when it's oh. just like down. Oh, totally. Because once she that braided it, me out. and I think it freaked me out at first <laughs> seeing her with her long hair. Like it was kind of freaking me out, like giving me the heebie jeebies. I'm not going to lie. If you had hair oh, that was like it's ridiculous. 100 feet long, her it, gives me the feet long. it gives me the heebie jeebies. I'm not going to lie. Because it wouldn't be clean. That's you why it bothers the rats me. Magically the, clean. Uh, yeah. The hair gives me the uh. Okay. And so once they braided it, it was like almost like anxiety inside of me, <laughs> like washed away. And then I could finally enjoy the movie. You okay. Were I think that's you. weird to say. That's but no, I understand that because being a, w- a being a female, not, I mean, men can have long hair, but it's, it's interesting when you when your hair kind of becomes 
a thing, right? Yeah. Especially like if you've had long hair. I I very vividly remember when I was younger, I had really long hair and um, I told my mom I wanted to cut it and she was a hair she used to be a hairdresser, so she always cut my hair as a kid. Mm-hmm. And so she braided it and put a rubber band at the bottom and at the top and then cut it at yeah. the braid. Mm-hmm. And I remember her she wasn't being ridiculous, but I remember her being like kind of sobby about it, like, oh. oh my God, because when you were holding like the stack of hair, it was like a thing right like like a living yeah. like a living weight of hair so i can imagine like where michelle's like this is kind of creepy it's weird that i feel that way but like literally instantly as soon as those girls braided her hair i was like oh there's rapunzel yeah and then i was like much more jovial about her this kind of freaked me out at first but no i understand that you know how andre loves scar yes scar. i think that mother gothel is my favorite villain of all time I also I love Mother Gothel. I hate her. Really? She Become a parent, and you're... <laughs> I, I'm not Whoa. even joking with you, though. Oh, I don't like her as a person. No, but right. bec- it's so funny that you say she's that. She's a good villain because she's an awful she is mother. So, she is a good villain, dude. And her voice? Nah. Yes. Her voice when she nah. sings is like... Oh! No. Like, it's, she's great. Okay, I hold like on. She has the let best me, let me, voice out let me of be the in between. On let me be the in-between, Louise. Stop with nah. the Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, here's the deal. She is, when we say villain, Mm -hmm. she is one of the truest villains that we have seen. Because, like, we talk talk Captain Hook. Right. He is not really a villain. Like, eh, he's like like, a master of circumstance. Even the song she sings about her, like, getting kind of chubby. Like, she's, like, literally puts Rapunzel down all the time. She's the worst. It's like this weird complex. And then Rapunzel always comes running back to her type of thing. Oh, yeah. When you you think psychology-wise, you're like, she's really... Maybe that's why I like her a lot. I don't know. But, like, if it wasn't for Mother Gothel the first half of the movie, I think I would have been disinterested. Like, I really, really like... Her character, she is a terrible villain. She has an extremely good singing voice that's like she does. very mm-hmm. theatrical and very like Broadway theatrical. And the mother knows best songs actually really funny. Mother if you take my favorite song, if like you one take, of my favorite songs, from if the you take movie. the um like the emotional connection out of it, because that's where watching it this time is the first time I've watched it since we had the baby. Mm. And Luis and I kept looking at each other like, oh my god, right. like. If, like, how could you treat someone? How like could that? you ever she treat someone like is, that? And excuse my language, she is a damn good villain. Like oh, the yeah. whole time, I was like, "Oh, Mother Gothel, that's cold." Oh yeah. Like, but I really, really enjoyed it, which Agreed. is super weird. But this time, I, not I so like much. her. <laughs> like, oh, okay, Luis, go ahead. She's terrible. <laughs> I hate her. But is she a good I villain? I wish she was yes. not there. Right. It, was she a good villain? No, uh, no, I don't think she was. She's <laughs> yeah, terrible. She was. <laughs> so she was a terrible villain. She was terrible. Made me want to pull my hair out. Right, because she's evil. Like no, because like Professor was, Umbridge. She was kind of freaking. Yes. yes! Oh no. my gosh. She was kind of annoying me. Like I literally want. If I could, I would have threw my thrown my shoe at shoe at her. Her <laughs> shoot. Oh. I love okay. her well, reprise of the Hell Mother Knows money. Best song. Where Rapunzel she's like trying knows to get best. her. And I can't stand oh, her voice. Oh, Rapunzel knows. You don't like best. her voice? I can't stand her, vo- oh, her voice. Her voice is, is great. No. It's good. Mother Ooh. understands. That's my favorite part. No. <laughs> Rapunzel's nah. so and mature I now. Remember, I remember, like, every time it com- that song nah. comes on, like, if I'm driving to Disneyland or something, I will, like, belt out the Mother's Knows Best song because it's super fun to sing. She has it a very Broadway theatrical voice. Whoever they picked for the actress for her is brilliant. She is played by Miss Donna Murphy. Who, Terrible. Yes. Who played um, yes. Dr. Octavius' wife in Spider-Man 2. Yes. That's what I know uh, her from. Terrible. Well, she killed it. She did great. Well, and you know what's really funny? Okay, Luis, are you done with the Terrible? <laughs> Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, what I was going to say is that one of my favorite things about this movie, um, again, is the is the singing voices. I think the singing voices mm-hmm. are really fabulous. I really enjoy Mandy Moore's voice. I really enjoy Mother Gothel's voice. Um, and, and Flynn, when he sings for the very short sure. amount. Yes. But um, it, it does have a more Broadway feel than a lot of the other Disney movies. And mm-hmm. it, like we said, it's kind of taking you into that new era of um, sound mm-hmm. for Disney musicals. And I, I like it. I think that I do like too. I have like a slight problem with the music in that it is like all of the songs are very, very, very visually entertaining. Like yes. when the songs are playing mm. on the movie and I'm seeing everything that's happening, it's all great and awesome and super fun and hilarious. But when I listen to the songs just by themselves, like on the soundtrack, like I did on my way home from work today, mm. it's not just not as fun. It's funny that you say that because someone bought me the soundtrack after this movie came out mm-hmm. um, and just because they knew I liked it a lot. And I listened to it once 
and I don't think I've ever listened to it again. That's it. And you know, want to know what's really funny mm. is that the song um, "See the Light." Is I that what it's light. called? That's the yeah. only one I can listen to. By that itself. one to me is I think it's absolutely beautiful. Mm. But I have not listened. And this for for Emily, for anyone who knows me, I can listen to a song maybe three times and know every single word just because right. that's my choral musical brain. You guys are probably the same way. Mm -hmm. But for me. I don't even think I know all the words of that song. I'll be honest. Right. I don't know the and words you've seen this movie a to times. all right. of the songs of this because movie like at all. I just all the other Disney movies when like you said Disney Pandora you listen to them you know all the words. Like never like Friend Like Me from Aladdin mm -hmm. has 17,000 words in it and I know every one of them. Right. Yeah. But this but this movie I, I don't. So I, I'm, songs, I'm kind of with you on they're that. Not, I would they're say not the, quite as memorable as No, some of the, the only no. song that's stuck with me is the See the Light song. Like considering there's probably like five songs on this soundtrack at yeah. least throughout the movie that's the only one that like stuck with me like i lied my the one that sticks with me the most is um i have some dreams she has <laughs> some dreams <laughs> i've no. got a dream <laughs> i've got a dream <laughs> no that's the one that like if i'm singing around the house that'll be the one and it'll always been the be the flynn part where he's like <laughs> enormous piles of money <laughs> exactly where he's surrounded by yeah. enormous and piles of money your collects so <laughs> make you Nicole. right and so like it's it's very it's a very it's good very song, funny when you're when you're like watching it but, but not when you're just when you're just listening mm -hmm. to it yeah it's, it's not as um Interesting. Stimulating. I agree. Those ruffians and thugs are hilarious, though. Ruffians that scene is one of my great. favorites in yeah. the whole movie. You know what freaks me out? That Andre laughed at every single time it came on screen. The little <laughs> tiny old man. The angel dude. That's what I'm yeah, talking man. about. The guy who creepy. says, I've got some dreams. She's got <laughs> some dreams. And <laughs> <laughs> he's like <laughs> drunk. He's oh, marinated. He's drunk. That dude is my absolute favorite. Marinated. And he was my favorite it's when I first weird. watched this. And watching it this time, I realized that he's voiced by one of my favorite stand-up comedians, Mr. Paul F. Tompkins. Oh, well, Paul there you Tompkins go. Paul is a hilarious dude, and I recognized his voice as soon as I heard it. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's PFT. But Got some dreams. <laughs> that little dude is ridiculous. That little dude is awesome. I, I, and his little I, uh, smoochy faces that he gives throughout the whole movie. He is basted, Fantastic. marinated. <laughs> he's all kinds of aided. They're funny. I like the, and now he's the most famous concert pianist in all the land. Right, uh, I know. With this hook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, suck on that, Captain Hook. So funny. And it, okay, <laughs> this is super random, but. Hold on, what um, was your other thing? You said you had two things. That and the hair. Mother Gothel and the hair. Oh. oh. Then I was just going to go into a music discussion, but I do oh. have another funny Which thing. Which we did. Um, so we're talking about the scene, like, with the ruffians and the thugs. In and, the snuggly um, duckling. In the snuggly, snuggly duckling. duckling which You'll is know a shirt it when you on, smell it. On, uh, it's a shirt on box lunch right now. Yes, it did is. Did you see it? I did, yeah. and I want it. Um, that was a total sidebar. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, so that snuggly duckling, we've never been on a Disney cruise, but aboard the Disney Magic, they're opening a restaurant that's the snuggly duckling. Shut up. Do they have, like, dueling pianos or something? It is... Dueling pianos. Shut up! Show. <laughs> she knows it's, it's my favorite. It's Rapunzel and Flynn, and they sing, and there's all of the ruffians and thugs. And I don't mean just, like, random ruffians and thugs. I mean the ruffians and thugs from the movie. Like, they're literally dressed up like each one, like, taken out of the movie, and it's a dinner mm. show. You guys, we're going. We're I'm going so on a Disney cruise. Luis refuses to go on the water like that, so we'll leave him at home. Okay. One lucky winner can come with us. <laughs> we'll go to the snuggly duckling with But you guys you. have to pay your own way. You Boom. could be part of the water <laughs> on the cruise. But doesn't that sound so fun? Oh, a I'm, dinner I'm show done. like that. Sounds that. awesome. And I, I, just, I said it's dueling pianos, which I don't know if it is, but there was a piano in the picture with the concert pianist dude playing it, so I bet there's some dueling going on. Right. He's got some dreams yeah, to go on a Disney dream. I read that there was actually like a musical that they played. I'm not sure if it was on cruises or or somewhere else, but they, there was there's a a tangled musical that they created, and it has like three new songs written by Alan Menken. So hmm. I'm not sure if that's the same thing that you're talking about. Uh, but maybe. It could be. Possibly. I don't know because it's it's new. It hasn't like quite opened yet. You know, it's hmm. like it's just been announced that it's going to be. I think on like the 2019 itinerary. Oh, uh, very. So cool. they're like making it happen. But oh my god, that sounds so fun. That sounds really fun. Um. So fun, I need to go on it. So, music-wise, not our favorite soundtrack. No, not, not my favorite. Our favorite uh, once again, it's it's great in the movie. I love yeah. it inside the movie, but not as as its own thing. Which a lot of other Disney movies, the soundtracks are fantastic, and I listen to them all the time. But mm -hmm. Tangled is. is I, not I can one agree of them. with you on that. I can. Yeah. I was just about to say that like Rapunzel's not represented in the Disney parks, but if you go to the Princess Fantasy Fair, that whole tower is supposed to be like her tower. Mm. The one in the middle. 
Yeah. Yeah, her if little face is popping out. It, it's like she's like, hello. Yeah, she's there. Hello. 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 Yeah. But I will say, like, the village. Uh, Too loose. I will say. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> when we watched this, like, as she was going through the village and, like, dancing and stuff like that. That's my I other literally made the comment that it looked like the frozen village. Ah. Well, it's and the okay. bridge going across, it looks like identical. Almost. So here's the deal about that. Let's have that conversation in just a second. But that's my other favorite scene. Just where they're dancing in the town square mm-hmm. and you kind of see yeah, them like. I, I do like that a lot. The music is and very ha- pretty. You know, they have and like, like the Rapunzel Tower and like that whole scene with like the little flags mm-hmm. in the air and everything at Disney World. Yes. Fantasyland. We'll have yes. to go one day. Fun yes. fact. I think it's bathrooms. Well, why does it look like frozen to me? It does. I will tell you why I think. Because this is like a fandom thing that they have on the the worldwide, the WWW. Okay. <laughs> um, apparently, w- people w- are saying that they think that Corona. Rapunzel's mom oh. mm-hmm. and deceased <laughs> are related. Elsa's mom are sisters. Mm. Oh. And that not that that makes the towns look alike, but that they're dis- that they're cousins. Right. So because like similar Culture. So that the culture is very similar and that they're in the same type of like they both like Norwegian or whatever villages. Right. Yeah. villages. So European they're supposed to be kingdoms. a very short distance away over a body of water. So I don't know okay, if it's like a short body of water. Because a lot of the little girls, they like all had red hair. Yes. And I even made the comment. I was like, wow, that little girl looks like little Anna. Like, right. You yeah. know, like yes. One of the ones hair. that was braiding the yeah, hair. Well, that was braiding her so, hair. And the only reason that I say that is because I've read some stuff that where people are saying that, but there is like the Disney Easter egg where when Elsa's getting coronated in Frozen, Flynn oh, and, Rapunzel and Rapunzel are supposed are there. to be right. there. They're supposed to be in there. And you actually can see the backs of, it's definitely like the, the back of Rapunzel's of head. Yeah. And then when you look, it's, it's Flynn next right. to her. Um, so it's supposed to be that they're coming for their cor- uh, their uh, cousin's coronation. Okay. Mm. So I mean, if it's close enough in relate in in distance relation, it makes a little bit sure. more sense. Why I'll, I'll believe the this. architecture I'll believe looks this. similar. Yes. Um, that scene in particular, where uh, plus it looks like Fantasyland. Sorry, right. like in where the Bob's where life. Rapunzel it does. Is, is running into the town for the first time. Yes. That's supposed to be a direct like emulation of like what it's like to walk into Disneyland. It's, exactly. And that's supposed to be her innocence and like jovial wonder at all of this magical stuff. Aww. Exactly. Because if you're walking anywhere through in Disneyland and Fantasyland, like where the bobsleds are, yeah. um, where the... It looks very similar. All of that. It's it's <laughs> very, um, very, very similar. Right. Swiss Alpsies. Alps. Can we talk about <laughs> which one is your guys' favorites in the movie? Sure. Maximus. Maximus. Maximus is Maximus. the best Pascal. character in this movie. Oh, but Pascal's Pascal. pretty good. <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. It's a close one for me. Well, I like Pascal yeah. and Maximus both, but I will say that Pascal is a little bit better because he doesn't talk. Well, oh, neither no. does Maximus. He it? doesn't. <laughs> no, no, no. But my, my favorite thing is when Rapunzel wrapped her hair around Flynn's hand and she starts singing the song <laughs> and he looks at Pascal all scared and Pascal points to his hand with his eyes, brows going up and down. It's like, it's yeah. Like, He's like, bro. you don't even know, bro. <laughs> Get, ready. Get ready for this. You don't yeah. even know. You gotta see it. <laughs> Check it out. Pascal looks at Flynn like, I got my eyes on you. Mm, just the way Pascal so uses good. like his little hands. Oh, yeah. And he just like, he just, he moves them, but he doesn't have fingers. And they're so just little pads. Yeah, it's Pascal very funny. Pascal is so cute. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's got like. Uh, they're like pads, a, though. Like, like, a, a, half. Like, like a lily pad hand. He has like yeah. a tripod thing going on in his <laughs> yeah. hands. You know, like a like when a When he, like when a he gives Flynn the wet willy in his ear to wake him up. <laughs> yeah, with his tongue. Yeah. I like, I like both of those characters probably equally. Maybe Maximus a little bit more because I love how he is so rule following, right? But then yeah. he's also like a big old puppy dog with yes, Rapunzel. He is. He's a and huge how he, dog. He's literally a dog. Yeah. Like, big old dog. But quite he's, he's a, a good he's a horse. <laughs> you tired? You've been chasing the big bad criminal all day. And he's like, oh. <laughs> the best part is like in the, in the very beginning, they're chasing Flynn and the two dudes. And. The oh God, the guard is giving directions yes. to the other guards, and then Maximus gives directions to the other horses. <laughs> and he's like, hur, hur. <laughs> oh my God, again. Maximus so is great. Let's be honest, though. If it wasn't for Maximus, that captain could not have gained the rank he had. Right, I, yeah. I think it's because of Maximus that he's where he's yeah. at. Well, at yeah. the end when they like he salute. He has no idea what he's doing. Maximus, Maximus at the end with all of the frying pans. 
so funny. <laughs> <laughs> the sword fight between the frying pan and the sword in Maximus's mouth. Oh, how it's the heck so is that good. even possible? I it's love amazing. it, Maximus. That's how. <laughs> I love it. That's so funny. It's so a Roman he, sword. That he here's pulled. another thing. Okay, so let's take it back to the beginning of the movie. So, um. Are we not taking it back? Can we take it back? Okay. So let's take it back to the beginning of the movie. So number one, do you realize that this story is narrated? Yes. Yeah, by Flynn. Flynn is narrating at the beginning of the movie and at the end, right? Yeah. yeah. But Frame story. <laughs> a lot of times, Disney movies aren't narrated like that, right? Mm, well, I, I can't think of one. Yeah. Uh, didn't Aladdin just get narrated? Right by, at the beginning by, by Genie, Genie, but that was it. True. Yeah. But the reason that I bring that up is because apparently after they scrapped the enchanted idea, mm -hmm. right, they thought about making the whole beginning part of Rapunzel a storybook opening where oh. it's oh, like, like the classic, like the book opening like Cinderella. Exactly. Yeah. And having them like talk through it, but then having uh. it animated as if it was in a book. Does that make sense? Mm, okay. And then coming into the 3D I will animation. Say I think it is one of like the first that's done it throughout the entire movie. Right. So like I, even at the end. Right. And who are they telling the story to? Us? Well, yeah, the, I the, guess it's the viewer, I guess. Okay. But I think it's interesting and the reason that I even bring up the narration, not so much that that's cool, but that the whole golden flower and I know that you have a problem with that and actually the first time I watched it I was kind of like hmm golden oh, flower whatever but yeah. here's the deal Luis and I were talking about it and the way that he was explaining it almost sounded like and I want to see if this is true mm -hmm. like folklore ah, okay so it's right. like I get that she has magical hair, blah, blah, blah. Okay, all that. But it sounds very much like it was a story that had been passed down from generation to mm -hmm. generation that a that a drop of sunlight had come to the Single ground. A drop of sunlight from the heavens. Exactly. Fell because how else would they have known to go find it? Exactly. Right. How, how else would they have known uh, that this is the only way to save her? Right. And The, uh, the it, queen. Yes. Ems pointed out that throughout their entire uh, like uh, scene in the castle when the queen's hurt, like you see... In the uh, soldier's armor, the sun. The sun's see. everywhere. Yeah. But was it, the song in the folklore? Because how did she know just to sing that to song? To sing the song. Well, and that's, I think that that, there's, wait, there's, wait. Little, there's little things that mess no, me no, up no, no, about no, no. the magic. No, 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 So hold on, so hold on. It's two separate things. We're looking at the Corona folk folklore, and then you're looking at Mo Mother Gothel. Right. Well, well, the Gothers like a witch. She can pretty much sing whatever she wants and get what she wants. Yeah, she could have. She could have come you know? up with that. Made but and she as made Ruth Rapunzel sing the song because she knew it. So it's not as if Rapunzel grew up with it or anything like. No, that. No, no, I'm not saying that Rapunzel knew to sing the song. I'm just saying like, where did the song come from? Just Mother, Mother Gothel, Gothel made it yeah. up, yeah. probably. So. Okay. Her magic -y spelly stuff. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Sing song is spelly. But it's song. interesting because I think that like, even if you could like take like the magic out of it, it could have been a type of folklore where like like some kind of gift came down because nobody, you know, back in the day knows how to explain anything. So it's right. a gift from the heavens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at that point, mom is healed and now they have this baby and the baby is like a miracle. So miracle it's not baby, so much yeah. that she's mm -hmm. like magical, it's but just it's like just a, that a legend. Yeah. It turns out this yeah. is just like an aloe vera plant or whatever. Exactly. No, <laughs> that's what I'm like saying. It's just got some medicinal properties. Exactly. So who who's to say... That that's actually real. What if it's just Mother Gothel's magic on some crazy hidden flower? Right. No, but mm. I... That, that coincides um, with the folklore. I'm not mm. saying that that has to be the truth. I'm right. just saying, like, hey, there could be some more of, like, other reasonings as to why that comes down. I think it trips me up because, okay, so the flower is there. It's a magical flower that turns Mother Gothel young, and she sings the song, and she, like, inhales the magic, and then she's young all the time. Mm -hmm. But then why did they, like literally uproot and use the entire flower to heal <laughs> the queen when they could have just sang the song she could have well, known they didn't, they know, they the didn't know the song mother gothel made up the song they didn't know all they knew song. is that the flower was enchanted and they could well, heal her wouldn't they have just taken one leaf like wakanda or something <laughs> this, this is, <laughs> this is all i know flower. no 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 they're, she was dying yeah their badly. queen was beloved and they were gonna save her right so yeah, it's like okay. and she had the best face how could you but let that face die how did that magic transfer to rapunzel's hair and then rapunzel's Tears. That's because it's magic. It so uh, <laughs> mermaids are real, guys. <laughs> yes, they're called manatees, and they originate in oh Florida. Oh my god! Manatees. On a whole take it back. <laughs> on a whole nother level. That's how the, the whole. Uh, that's the how, uh, how the whole like mermaid just, folklore just, just comes out. They just weird confuse to me. sea cows with. There them. was just not, there was just no. I totally get it. I, I was just dis saying. I had a little disconnect. 
with the, okay. the magic. Right. And you were providing some backstory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just I, I understand what you're saying about the folklore thing, though. I like that. Okay. <laughs> it's the only way to explain it. Let's yeah, be honest. I, I, I like it, too. I'd be lost in that movie if it wasn't for that. Sure. Well, and you have to have a little bit of disbelief just because. You do. I mean, it's just. Tad. Yeah. I mean, anything with magic. <laughs> we're shadow right. manning again. We just got to have some disbelief. <laughs> um... The other, a couple, there's a couple good Easter eggs in this movie. A couple of them are more emulations of other movies versus mm-hmm. just like actual, um, like what we would call like straight up Easter eggs. Um, like we see Sleeping Beauty spinning wheel up right, in, the in the tower. Um, we see an apple um, that looks like it could be bitten, painted on um, the banister of their oh. tower. It looks, you know, it could be. Apple. Exactly. Um, which fandoms say, oh, could Mother Gothel be actually the evil queen because of her being oh, able to go mm-hmm. back and forth? Who sure. Oh, Lordy, who knows? Talk about bringing in a whole other kind of issue. You're not the first daughter I've tried to kill, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be killing all my daughters. I'm out here. Um, but there's actually a real Pinocchio um, in the Snuggly Duckling mm. <laughs> when they're singing their song. And um, you see, what what was his name? Um. PFT? <laughs> yes, PFT, <laughs> follow talking. You see um, Dream Man hanging around on the chandelier. He's going around in the big circle, and you see the full pan scene. Mm-hmm. Um, you see Pinocchio up in a corner like he's hanging out like on a banister up there. Oh. Um, that one was really nice. cool. And I actually saw that one before I read it, and I was really excited. Oh, really? You saw it? That's yeah, awesome. I actually saw it this time. Woo-hoo. Real exciting. Wow. Um, oh, I see him. I, I looked it up. I Googled it. Guys, Google it. <laughs> you'll, you'll see it. Google. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Stop. So that was, that was really interesting. I enjoyed that. My favorite person. Ooh, is he my favorite prince? Flynn Rider and is is creating some competition with Prince Eric because Flynn Rider uh. is hilarious. He's yeah. handsome. His real name is Eugene Fitzherbert, which <laughs> I like. Um, he is... Much better than Andre Fitz. Martin. Fitz. Nobody Fitz. knows who. Fitz. Fitz. Fitz Simmons, people. And if you know who Fitz, Fitz Simmons, Simmons is. Oh, from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.? His smolder Man. face doesn't <laughs> That was work. ridiculous. And they can <laughs> never get his nose right. <laughs> the smolder is Here the best. Here comes the smolder. <laughs> yeah, he's like preparing her for it. Well, well no. <laughs> and she's never seen a man in her life and is not smitten at all. She's no. like, okay, like, what are you right, doing? I don't know what's happening with your face. But, it, but out of all the men that could have, like, come up into her smolder. tower, like, She's she she got a good one. I'm right. just going to say. This, is, this is what's crazy to me about Rapunzel. She's never seen another human besides Mother Gothel. She's only ever read about men in books. Like, she's only ever read about other humans in books. And the first dude that she sees is Flynn Rider, and she's not smitten. I'd be smitten. Well, because she was <laughs> terrified first. Good for you. You got to get over fear before you can She uh, thought love he it. was a okay. ruffian. She thought he had pointy teeth, remember? He was going to steal her hair. Steal her hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, well, she was brainwashed to think everybody was going to steal well, her hair. Yes. Which exactly. Yeah. Which it was her mother. <laughs> Bro, Flynn, Flynn she Rider wields is that, uh, that frying pan very well. So does he. They, they I've both got to get me one of these. <laughs> She's practiced with it for three hours a day so that when she meets a ruffian, she, <laughs> she can, can kill it. it. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Well, speaking <laughs> of Flynn, this brings us up to our dun 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 Battle. <laughs> Go. All righty then. <laughs> this week we have who is a better thief? Flynn or Aladdin? Ta-na-na. I compared Flynn to Aladdin a lot uh, in my notes here. What did I say? Um, oh, I, I said I wrote, I like that Flynn's introduction is pretty Aladdin. He's a thief. But he's like a fun, cool thief. You know, he's not like one of those mean thieves. He's like a nice, he's like a nice thief. <laughs> oh yeah, because Aladdin was very mean, giving that bread to those kids. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm very saying. Very mean. They're both they're both cool and fun. Not like most thieves who are both jerks, pretending right? to be people they aren't. They're both standing <laughs> on top of something, looking out at another something, and is like, I could get used to this. They both lie to princesses all the time. <laughs> Actually, did Flynn? Uh, Flynn didn't lie about who he was. Right. He, he lied about where he was going. Yes, he, he lied <laughs> about he lied about the crown at one point. But that's, that's oh, that's true. Yeah. Better. Who's about a thief? I feel Flynn like they're both pretty crappy. Is a better thief mm-hmm. because Aladdin got arrested, and oh, so did Finn. But that was only because somebody turned him in. Uh, no, 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 no. I I think Flynn is a better thief because he stole things that were. 
uh, more valuable, valuable, worth more money. Well, Aladdin was at, not one step ahead of the breadline. He wasn't, but or one swing ahead of the. But sword. after that, <laughs> after he gets caught and goes to jail, after he escapes from jail with the help of Jafar. He does steal the lamp. Oh, wait, no, that was a boo. He also steals the <sighs> princess's heart. No, I mean, he went in there and stole something that was unstealable. He's the diamond me. in the rough. Is yeah, Flynn but that doesn't mean he's better. The diamond thief? in the rough? Flynn is the better. <laughs> Flynn is definitely the diamond in the rough. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. I'm saying Flynn. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think. What else? Does, does Latin steal anything else in the movie? Like after he. Uh, he gets the lamp and stuff like that. He kind of puts Stephen behind him once he gets made a prince. So I suppose not. Because he has a genie. <laughs> yeah, he's got a genie. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't need, need a thief. He doesn't need a thief. Yeah. So, yeah. He has Christina Aguilera. <laughs> <laughs> he went, went, and let him out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, I, I'll, I'll I'll give it to Flynn, too. He, he pulls a pretty good heist in the beginning with the, uh, with the crown. And, and honestly, if he could have gotten away from Rapunzel... I yeah. mean, he honestly could have gotten away from Rapunzel. He like, could've. he could have just left this girl out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, right. yeah. He would have been off with that crown easy. Yeah. Aladdin. Sure. Mm. He right. has too much of a heart for the other people. <laughs> ah, there is the point I was going to make as well. Ooh. For Flynn. Up until he meets Rapunzel, he doesn't necessarily have a heart. No, he's out for himself. Yeah. Yeah. He's selfish. And unfortunately, thieving, you can only be selfish. When you thieve. Surrounded by enormous piles of money. He wants to be tanned, rested, and alone. Yeah. He doesn't even want anybody with him. No. So this seems like it's a clean sweep. I would say. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Clean sweep. We all know the real battle is between Rapunzel's hair and Fabio's hair. Who's is more illustrious. (laughs) (laughs) Illustrious? (laughs) (laughs) Illustrious? Illustrious. Illustrious. Spell that for me. I don't even even think that's a real word, to be quiet. It's (laughs) not. It's not a real word. (laughs) Illustrious? Illustrious. Okay. Industrious. (laughs) Whose hair is more industrious? So, okay. (laughs) Gets the job done. Have you have you guys <laughs> seen Rapunzel's? Obviously, she uses it as a whip. Yeah, the girl got good hair. The that was the whip sound. The oh, tin, the what is it? the tinsel strength? The tin strength? Tin, uh, the tinsel. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Too loose. <laughs> Too loose. <laughs> okay, l- I want to talk about you know the most famous scene from the movie, the lantern scene. Ah. If bam, bam, you bam, bam. oh, is this a spoiler? Spoiler. For this movie? <laughs> if you have seen Coco, oh. that scene kind of reminds me of so like similar color schemes and things that they've used in Coco. Like okay. it looks it looks so magical. I just love that scene. It looks very beautiful. I think that's the, the most I beautiful cry scene. every time I see that scene. The most beautiful scene in the movie. Uh, I read that they use like forty five thousand lanterns oh, wow. uh, for that for that scene and it, it there's no doubt because there's time. There's definite points where they're panning around looking at the different areas and they are too numerous to count on the screen. Right. It's absolutely gorgeous. They're everywhere. And they look good. I like the the color tones, the pinks and the purples and the yellows. The yellows. The yellows. I, out there. Well, and I think that's one of the things that got me most about this movie. There's there's two things that make it my favorite. I'll tell you right now. Number one is this scene. Mm-hmm. But but because of what you're talking about, it's beautifully portrayed like i said the village scene earlier it's beautiful like that's a place i would like to go like it looks real cool um and even like when you look at the tower like that whole little that cove cove thing they're in with the waterfall like that tower there that's a pretty cool little place like Mm -hmm. you could like hang out there like if you weren't a slave prisoner there like that'd be kind of cool you know Mm -hmm. um it's like a (laughs) treehouse but so i liked the visual aspect of this movie the second thing i liked is her innocence i just liked that she was gilded from a lot of things she Mm -hmm. didn't know a lot and once she started discovering the world she realized it wasn't as it it wasn't the way that people had portrayed it to her and i feel like that's kind of how (laughs) i'm not trying to get political or anything but i feel like that's kind of how my life is like when Mm -hmm. we we grow up we see the world in one way because you grow up one way and then you go out and you do your own thing and you're like 
wow. Yeah, you're just constantly discovering how wrong you were for right? all of your childhood. And you're like, wow, there's just so much more out there. There's so much more to see. There's so much more to learn about. And it's almost like you can discover new things every single day as an adult in our real world. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I think that's why I really like her mm-hmm. is because that's how I felt, especially like going to college, which is like that time was right when this movie came out. So I was kind of like experiencing her little like, oh, my God. At the same time, she was. You were daddy. I love himming. That's what you were doing. Daddy, I love him. You mean like, like I relate to Ariel. You you relate to. Oh, okay. oh, okay. I thought you meant like I was daddy. I loving him. Rapunzeling. No, I I get what <laughs> you're you were having a moment. <laughs> yeah. Best yeah. day ever. I, I like best day ever. I like Rapunzel too. I like her. Oh, and that whole scene. I'm sorry. Where she like touches the ground for the first time. No, when she's like, <laughs> I'm never going back. I have to oh, go back. Right. <laughs> she's oh, having her existential geez. crisis. So hilarious. She's and that is lot. quite good. Like I if like you that. think like. Like Belle from Beauty and the Beast has like Stockholm syndrome because of the Beast. Rapunzel's got it way worse for her mom. Ten Mother thousand Gothel. times. Oh my worse. goodness! That's why Mother Gothel's a great villain? Oh, Just she's saying. got her like guilt tripped into another level. Oh. Mm-hmm. And I felt that kind of guilt in my life. Like you would think I was like in a very guilty household because that's exactly how I felt growing yeah. up. So I I connect with her on that. Guilty household. Yeah, Jeff. It's like I get a I oh. get a phone call it's and I'm so like, funny <laughs> because <laughs> it's true. Guilty in here. Reasons that <laughs> you and Louise like Rapunzel is because of her innocence. And which is so funny because I can't, for some reason, like, that's like a disconnect between her and me. Like, those are like certain reasons why I don't really like her like that she's much. She's like too naive. It's for like you? too naive, and she seems like super, super young compared to Flynn mm. to me. Like, she looks young, she acts young. She's had no social interaction. I know, which is fine. Mm-hmm. But mm. that's like where I feel a disconnect with her. But it's so funny because. If you read books like how I do, there is a series of books called <laughs> The Lunar Chronicles. Y'all ever read a book before? <laughs> yeah, I read a book. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys read books like I read books. <laughs> I read a lot of books. There's a, okay. there's a series of books called The Lunar Chronicles where oh. um, each book is kind of a d- based off of a dis- different princess. It's like modern so like, sci-fi yes, retellings. Yes, they're, they're sci-fi retellings. So like the first book is called Cinder, and it's a retelling of Cinderella, and she's a cyborg. Um, like things like that. So then, death. Lock. What is what is the Rapunzel <laughs> one called? <laughs> the book? Um, uh, I don't remember what it's is called. Anyways, Punzi. <laughs> Can up. you look it up? Like, Locked up. Uh, the third the third book is about <laughs> Rapunzel, and she is extremely innocent. She got taken away by this like evil entity, and they locked her in a spaceship out in the middle of space, where she literally just does. Um, what do you call cross stitch? Where you break no, where you break into internet stuff and steal things. Hacks. She's a hacker. She's a hacker. And the book but is called Cress. Cress. And I Cress. Cress. Her, her, I think her name is like C R E S S. That's her name. S S. Yeah, oh. that's her name. Her name is Cress. But it's so freaking good because she's so innocent. The innocence in that I love, which I don't understand why I don't like it in this movie. Hmm. But if you haven't read the Lunar Chronicles, do it freaking good. Anyways, that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Have you seen the little short that um, came after Tangled? Where they get married. He's so cute. It's very Tangled cute. Ever, ever after. after. Which is funny yes. to me because usually like. It's not even about usually her. Usually the prince right. and the princess <laughs> at the end get married. But this one like you don't actually even physically see them get married. They just say like and mm-hmm. now we're getting there. Well he says specifically like and after years and years of asking I finally said yes. No just kidding. I asked. I asked. But he said it took years. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah. They didn't get married <laughs> the day after they met like, <laughs> wow. like every other princess. Hey, you have to give her some props. Right. Yeah. She, she hasn't needed, had any social interaction. She, she needs she needs to see her options she before she makes there, options. See the world, see the other princesses. So I and actually stuff. really did like that about them though. That they didn't get married till like years and years later. Yeah. It was cool. I like that he didn't like her that much at first. And I Oh, I know. Like they she, neither of them were smitten with each other. I don't Go ahead. remember hearing the word the words I love him or I love you. No. No, no. I don't think they said it in this movie. They were just kind of like I want to say inf- infatuated for each other. Sure, but well, that you could then turned into a romance. The moment where, spoiler alert, he dies. He gets stabbed by Flynn. Gets stabbed by Mother Gothel, and she says, "I will go with you if you let me save him." That's when I 
that's when the love that's when i really feel it when he's dead and she's still singing the song to him but it's like not about her hair anymore it's about him she's like bring back what once was mine well and i don't and even like, think that's where i feel it i it could have sworn i heard a love in there no in that no. scene no no All it right. could even it could not even be that she loves him like traditional what we think of like i love Luis because i love him mm-hmm. like on a deeper level think about it he's the first kind person that's ever right that he saved her. He changed her, her life. Yeah. He literally saved her from her tower and he helped her realize who she was. So for her, regardless of if she liked him or didn't like him on like a romantic level, he is her savior. Right. He's so, the reason that she knows what love is because so her she mother would be, did not love her. No. I want to know what love is. Yes. Sorry. She would be sad regardless of if he was a male or female, if it was Pascal, Max. Sure. Like, yeah. She. Yeah. So even in that point, it could have not been romantic, but I think that she obviously did feel romantic feelings yeah. for him but oh, it was interesting yeah. that like you said it wasn't like a full-on like let get married right y'all it wasn't a love at first sight thing at all no like i she, love their relationship she smacked him in the head with a frying pan twice yes. before which is <laughs> before great. she even spoke and to him. she let his face like <laughs> drag on the flow oh he was smacking i'm surprised his nose didn't look like one of those noses Hot. well and that's right? kind of a joke like his <laughs> nose should look like all those posters <laughs> it really should how the heck was he not like in terrible pain once he woke up? He should have had like a Looney Tune sized lump on his head. Wouldn't that have been hilarious if they had like if they redid like that part of the movie and had him looking exactly what he would have looked like with <laughs> bruises and cuts and stuff? That oh, would have been hilarious. That if, would have been if funny. she had beat the up his face and he passes the poster and it looks money. exactly like that. That would have been funny. Hilarious. Because that was very unrealistic. Yeah, like he was. would not look beautiful. Still. Disney, call us up. We got some punch up for Tangled. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Punch Ever After. <laughs> they have a TV show called Tangled. Well, it was called Tangled Before Ever After. Mm. And now I think it's just called Tangled the Series. It's called Tangled the Series. So Andre and I were just doing so much research on Tangled. We had got, we watched a movie, we watched Tangled Ever After, and then we're like, we're going to watch the first episode of Tangled the Series because Mandy Moore is killing it in the game right now. She's on This Is Us. She's doing Tangled the Series. Like, she's doing a lot of acting. Um, so it's a cartoon. And I like her voice. Which I is, really do. I do, good. too. It's, she's really cute. She's great. It's like very, it's a weird cartoony look to it. It kind of looks like DuckTales. I think if you've seen DuckTales, it's like the a similar. Do you, but Disney's kind of taking that route because the, like the show with Mickey Mouse. Mickey. Yeah, yeah. They, they look like that. It's interesting because it like it's like, it's obviously supposed to be like a 2D animation, but it's also obviously like computer animated. Like and they did angular. it all with computers. Everything yeah. is very, very angular, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, we watched the first episode only because it was freaking me out that this is after the movie and she has her actual long blonde hair, which we all know got chopped off and turned brown. So I was like, we need to watch the first episode because I hope they explain the hair thing, which I thought maybe they had just done because kids associate like Rapunzel with her blonde hair and not her brown hair. If I saw her with brown hair, I'd probably be like. Okay. Who's that, who that girl not Yeah, dress. exactly. <laughs> but basically they explain, like, one night she was out in the woods with her best friend named Cass- Cassandra yeah, or something like, like that. She's, like, part of the guard or something. Yeah, she's, like, part of the royal guard. Lady Sith. And, um... Just like Lady Sith. Um... Like her hair, something happened, and then her hair just grew well, back. Well, we we messed up, dear. We did not watch the first episode. That of, wasn't the first episode of the series. No, I I I pulled up on YouTube and it was just a random episode. I was like, oh yeah, we'll just check this out, see how it is. It was an okay episode, but it, it didn't give us the explanation. Oh gosh, wanted. darn you! Well, anyway, <laughs> she's trying to figure out why her hair grew back, and so she goes to like this alchemist, and he runs a bunch of tests on her hair, and her hair doesn't have its like magical properties anymore, but it's like indestructible and like protects people and things like that. So I think that's how pretty they're magical. <laughs> how they're going with the series is like figuring out why her hair is back, oh. which is kind of weird. Hmm. It was good though, but it was weird. Yeah, hmm. it's a fun little show. I like I like the 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 animated shows based on the movies. I like the Aladdin. I like the little uh, the Young Hercules show. I like the Timon and Pumbaa show. <laughs> I loved the Timon and Pumbaa. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Good stuff. Anyway. Good stuff. What does this have on Rotten Tomatoes? This movie on Rotten Tomatoes, I feel like it's probably pretty good. It did very well. It has an eighty-nine percent. Okay. Um. Yes. Very critically acclaimed. It has a seven point eight on IMDb. It has a seventy-one on Metascore, and it was it, it was very well received at the time. As I said, it it made a, a buttload of money. Also, this is the most expensive, um, animated film ever. 
This movie cost really? $260 million to make. That was the budget for this movie. And like most like big budget Marvel superhero movies are around that same price. Why Some did it cost much so lower. much? I'm not exactly sure. I remember reading originally uh, that a lot of it had to do with the CGI in relation to her hair. Yeah, that's what I was Because oh. the strands of her hair, to make them do what they needed to do and move with her body, like... They have the technology to have a body move, right? Like my arm is moving, my yeah. hand is moving. It it looks fluid, but hair is very different. And so they were talking about how that and like Sully and Monsters Inc. Mm-hmm. is very hard because very they want to make it look real. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I remember watching a video where they were showing like test subjects of Rapunzel. So you had like Rapunzel on the screen, like in like a green background or mm-hmm. whatever. And they would like make an adjustment where her hair should be going off to the right, like with the wind. Right. And literally like 10,000 strands like freak out and like go all over her face and you're like oh my gosh right, so, so they, they have to, to manually go in and fix all those strands to where they're supposed to be so i don't know if it has to do with that i mean that's oh, more time I'm sure but she has a uh, hundred thousand strands of hair boom and the hair is approximately 70 feet long oh 840 my inches so if you can imagine how that how tedious that would be you almost have to appreciate it just for that that right. is yeah. insane just the time it took to oh for sure animate all that hair i would they, hate hair. they were probably the happy with that braided scene too they're like oh thank god we don't thank have to yeah. god <laughs> it sways from right to left and that's all it does <laughs> thank god Flynn cuts that off right, yeah. <laughs> so much cut it easier. off we're not we're not doing a sequel cut it <laughs> <laughs> pixie cut for life <laughs> So That's yeah. so funny. I'm so just saying, who gets the haircut like that and looks that fly? That's, That's all I'm hair. saying. Only her. Yeah, yeah. It, looked, it looked great immediately. <laughs> it just fluttered out. Short hair is in right now. <laughs> I know. That's what Addie's hair looks like. Yeah. She could rock little Rapunzel. Oh, she she could. Little, Rapunzel. little pixie cut. Little <laughs> pixie. What are you going to give this movie, Andre? Um, That's a good question. I like this movie a lot. Yes. Yes, I like this movie a lot. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 yes, yes. it's a very good movie. Um, I have fun watching it. It's very funny. Once again, Maximus, that dude's oh killing me. Gosh, the he is entire funny. time. Flynn <laughs> is very funny. Pascal is funny. I like I like the amount of humor in it. It's got a lot of good messages. I like Mother Gothel as the villain. She's um scary at times. I, I liked her death scene a lot. Like her aging Ooh, rapidly. Yeah, I remember being great. very like freaked out. It was very creepy. Like, I Ooh. love Mother Gothel. She just turned she's white saying. skin and then well, her, think about it. her centuries. mirror got all yeah, she's old. messed up and then she just poofed into a pile of dust. And she when she like pulls window. the thing over her eyes yeah. and she's like going backwards. You're like, oh, yikes. yikes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's jolly good. Um, <laughs> the, um, jolly good. Jolly, jolly good. good. Well, that ain't so jolly. Some of the <laughs> Surely good. Um, some of the music stuff is is a little wonky for me still. Um, once again, not during the movie, but just after, and that that affects my score. So I think <laughs> I'm just going. Wow. To, I'm going to <laughs> give it lots of explanation today. <laughs> uh, an eight, eight right. point oh, solid. Very Ooh. good. Good stuff. Solido, solido. I am also going to give this movie an eight. Eight. Um, I absolutely still love Mother Gothel. Every scene with her is fabulous. Boo. Maximus is fabulous. <laughs> Pascal so is fabulous. I love Flynn and Rapunzel together. Mm-hmm. There's things I like about it. There's things I don't like about it. Um, also, I was going to say, maybe the reason the movie is such a disconnect to me is that a lot of the songs, like the characters aren't physically singing. Like her first opening scene, she's like the, when will my life begin song? Like, she's not moving her mouth singing the song. It's more she's of like just, a montage, yeah. like a music video. And the same with, like, the I'll See the Light. Like, they're only singing maybe, like, the, the last, end. the very end of the song. So I think maybe that's why, I don't know. I've never thought about it, but maybe that's why I kind of have a disconnect with it. But I'm going to give this movie yeah. an 8, and I will watch it again. <laughs> All right. Louis, we'll do, what's your score? I got some dreams. I think I got some dreams. I, I think an 8 <laughs> is a good, a good score dreams. to give. Okay. Um. Well, I was mostly just into uh, Maximus. And, <laughs> oh, he's uh, freaking hilarious! And I was l- every single time. Uh, what's her name was in the sc- in the scene? I was always looking for uh, the chameleon dude, the gecko from, from Geico. Uh, <laughs> I was looking for that guy. He's a and modern day Geico. <laughs> and because of that, I I'll give it an eight. You know, with me, uh, music's eh, music's gonna be music for me. I'm not really rating it off of that, but sure. um, I was very entertained. So an eight is just fine. You guess um, Maximus is like a modern day uh, Pegasus. 
Exactly. Pegasus. He's That's, very Pegasus. That, yeah. I was trying to think of a battle myself, and I, I couldn't think of another horse. I knew there was another animated horse out there. There's I actually think quite of. a few horses right. in yeah. the Disney repertoire. There are. I have a stuffed animal of Pegasus, and if I was like a kid now, I would totally have a stuffed animal of Maximus. Oh, yeah. What about the horse from uh, War Horse? War horse? Yeah. yeah. What? He's pretty... <laughs> Hidalgo. He's pretty uh, battle Sea biscuit. <laughs> oh, gosh. Maximus We're just going to start naming horses. <laughs> I'm just... Okay, Miss Emily. I'm going to say... Jack. Horse man Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say I agree with everybody's stuff. Um, no, this isn't the best Disney movie out there, but she's still my favorite princess. Mm-hmm. I think she's just too cute. So I'm going to give it a nine because I'm smitten with her. Right. Um, like I said, the first time I saw her, I... All I could think was like, she's so cute. Yeah. Like everything cute. she does is just so cute. Yeah. And I'm going to say it's because of Mandy Moore. Yeah. Mandy I Moore love Mandy. Great it's because of performance her performance in this. Because if other people other it, it's the voice acting is beautiful. Yeah. And I want to say this was one of her first voice acting gigs. Probably. I think I read that somewhere. I read that this she is like is her, Rapunzel. her dream jobs because she always she loved a bunch of Disney movies. As Mandy a kid. Moore is Rapunzel. Oh, yeah. Like, hands down. And it's and it's just it was done well for her. I think that you could tell she was acting as she was saying her lines like because mm-hmm. it just comes through. So to me, I, I'll give it a nine. Um, it's probably rated more as an eight. I agree with you. But because of her just cutie cuteness. <laughs> She's a nine in so my right. book. Can give it a ten if you want. I no, gave Mermaid okay. a ten. I know you did. Mm-hmm. I was there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we know. <laughs> we know. Um, but I, but I. Ooh, she's you digress. So cute. She's your girl. Many more was in Brother Bear too, as Nita. Okay. Well, there you go. There you go. We um, love some Brother Bear. Speaking of Brother I Bear. Do, speaking of Brother Bear, Boom, which Emily segue. loves some. Um, great segue, everyone. This comes up on our last week of the month, so we're going to have our voting. Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! You guys get to vote I on love voting week. I do, too. Because then I don't have to choose what to watch. <laughs> you guys get to choose for us. So you guys are going to have three different options this week. We have a very good mix of Pixar and old and kind of newish and everything. So um, your first option is Cars. Cars one, the, the original. original Cars movie. Original, original, Lightning McQueen. Good chow. Good chow. Good chow. Um, your second option is The Sword in the Stone. Ooh, I've never seen that. I love The Sword in the Stone. Swords with stones. I've never seen it either. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's a song in there? <laughs> the sword in the stone to no. the right <laughs> shines in the light of the moon. <laughs> No, that's <laughs> how I go. Pretty sure I just made that up. And the last <laughs> option is, like we just said, Brother Bear. Brother, Brother Bear. Bear. I've, never, I've never seen Brother Bear. You need to get on the Brother Bear train. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Like, if I had a say in this, I don't know what I would vote for. No, I know. I, like I don't know th- if I would vote for Cars or Sword in the Stone or Brother Bear. This is a hard one. Because Cars 1 is good. It's, it's amazing. Sword in the Stone I've never seen, so that gives it like an automatic yeah. I'm excited. It's good. And Brother Bear Heck so good. underrated. I've never seen it, so I'm excited. It's, I would say, for me personally, most underrated Disney movie. It's mm. fabulous. Because Luis and I hadn't seen it. Neither of us have s- had seen it until we got married. Oh. And then we watched it for the first time and was like, what is this And then this you made me watch it. And I, I was did. like, Brother Bear, what? And then I watched it and was like, oh, my God. Phil Hilarious. Collins. No. Oh, yeah. Phil Collins does music yes, for that Phil. movie, too. I don't remember. He I don't does. remember any songs. He does. From he, does. he does. Okay. He does. Well, there you go. Ta-da. <laughs> Check them out, you guys. So you guys have, um, from the start of this episode up until Wednesday to vote, make sure that you do that. We'll be posting the stuff on Instagram. Cast your votes, and then we will be airing that episode the Monday after. Ta-da. Ta-da. It's fun. It's fun. Uh, it's- the sword Never mind. in the stone. I was gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to be like at the time that this episode is airing, but we should tell them where we're gonna be in two weeks, guys. Go in Where's two the weeks. Waltz we'll going? be in Disneyland for you, all of us, not just me and Andre. Yeah. We're all four gonna be in Whoa. Disneyland. Whoa! Actually. All, All five, five of, us. of us. There are five people. Podcast baby will be Ooh. in the building. Burr, 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 burr. Burr. Yes. So, so we're going to go to Disneyland um, the weekend, the last weekend in March. So March the weekend 30th, of the 28th. 31st. For Thanks someone's birthday. Happy birthday. And mainly to take cute pictures of Addie. Emily. Whoa, it's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm Lee's birthday. And it, yeah, and it's Addie's first so, trip. So yeah, we're yeah. going to so be there. So if you're going to be in Disneyland, Hit come hang up. out. You we know. got buttons. Buttons. <laughs> 
buttons. We got buttons. <laughs> Speaking of buttons. buttons, you can get yourself a button by signing up for our Patreon. If you go to patreon.com slash the Walt Vault and sign up at the $5 level, you get a free button in the mail. You know, isn't that exciting? And maybe some more fun. Maybe some in more of the, the gifts. sword and the stone Who knows? for you. <laughs> we'll send you a whole <laughs> no, sword no, and a whole sword. stone. No, uh, <laughs> we stole it from Disneyland. It's fine. <laughs> on Patreon, if you sign up, uh, not even at the five dollar level, at the one dollar level, you get access to our after show, a crack in the vault. I thought you guys. <laughs> I thought you guys crack were gonna sing the song. In the vault. Vault. Crack, crack in the vault. There it is. We sound like we're on. I got crack in my cup right now. <laughs> Some coffee. We're drinking coffee. Um, <laughs> not crack. <laughs> not crack. Guys, not real crack. Don't do drugs. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yes, please go to patreon.com slash the wall vault. Sign up uh, and you get access to our, our super fun after show. Sign up for a little bit more and you, uh, you, get, a, you get a gift. And you're helping us and keep love. the lights on in the vault. You know? It's, I'm telling you guys. It's dark in here, all right? There's a bunch of DVDs, and it's dark, <laughs> darkness. You know, the best part about the outro is that Andre is a stand-up comedian, and he literally looks at us like we're audiences, <laughs> and he's giving a set. He's like, it's dark in here, <laughs> like waiting for us to laugh. And they stare at me in silence, just well, like Well, and I don't audience. know if I should, like, laugh into the mic, because I am laughing over here, but, like, do I laugh into the mic? <laughs> yeah, do that. Ha huh? You guys uh go to the Instagram at Insta. the Wall Vault Pod. That's where all the voting is happening. That's where all the action is happening. Go there, send us messages. We love it. Uh we'll interact with you there. You can also follow us on Twitter or Facebook at the Walt Vault Pod. Mm. Send us messages. We'll mm. read them on the show. <laughs> Please. They're fun. You know what? We got a uh like a, a a very long comment on our Who Framed Roger Rabbit episode on YouTube. Oh, yeah, Man, we did. The dude yelled at us like about a lot of <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, he did. We were so wrong about Judge Doom and all, all kinds of things. It's a good thing. We said that we don't know everything. Yeah, we, I know. we don't disclaimer. know everything. That's called the disclaimer of all disclaimers. We have pixie dust just all up in this place. Pixie <laughs> dust. This is a lot going on. So, just to let you know, again, reiterating. <laughs> we are not perfect. We're not perfect. We don't, we're, we, we're not practically perfect in every way, but we are not perfect. Like We're pretty close, but we're not full on Disney experts, you know? We we know some stuff. We don't know all the stuff. Yeah, I, just, so I just talk. Yeah. <laughs> we just talk. So you can yell. So us listen to us like. talk on YouTube, on Stitcher, on Google Play, and on iTunes. Go there. Subscribe. That's the best way to get all of our content into your faces. And also, leave your us. Your ears. Your, fa- your ears are near your face. Also, on iTunes, please leave us a review and or a rating. That really helps Ooh. us. Uh, Spread the Walt Vault love out to the rest of the world. I have a dream. I have a dream. Yeah, and it's one day to get into Club 33. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> please subscribe. That's it for now. <laughs> Stop. The vault is now closed. Bye.